Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. And as many of you guys know on here that I'm a huge diecast collector, uh, especially Mopars, obviously, because I love Chrysler stuff. So um, one of my favorite castings when I was a kid was the Dodge Viper RT10. And recently, Mattel had Hot Wheels redesign their RT10 casting. And I figured I'd go over how it's kind of evolved over the few years, like the last 31 years, not few, but 31 years, and kind of show you the difference in how far the die cast uh, process has come. It's kind of funny in a way because I just opened, this car here had a bad corner. Um, I opened up another one from 1992, this yellow one, because it had a bad blister. So I have a whole bunch of these Vipers. Um, but so don't get mad it's not a huge collector's thing i mean they were damaged anyway so i wanted to open them up and kind of show you but i figured i could compare them to two other castings that came out uh this year and then the new 2023 casting which is kind of funny because all three of these ran this year so it's kind of comical because these were updated in 2016 they're the, actually this casting all the way to 20 from 1992 to 2016 but they updated it and i'll show you the different updates compared to the new one so first of all let's look at the original from 1992 and if you look at the bottom of these both of these say mattel 1992 um let's start with i'm gonna start with the yellow one first because this one's kind of funny um so it's yellow, and if you can't really tell until you put the red one up next to it on the camera because of the lighting, the red one has silver disc wheels, the yellow one has gold. Um, there's different wheel variants of this, these particular models, and uh, this just happens to be the same kind of wheel, so I just kind of wanted to go over this. But So this is a, ninety, like I said, 92 casting. Um, it's kind of comical because if you look at this yellow one, it kind of reminds me of... it doesn't really look like a Viper. I mean, if you ask anybody, oh, they're, oh, that's a Viper. It doesn't look like the production car. It kind of looks like one of those Hennessy Venom cars from earlier because the chin is more pronounced. It looks kind of like it's smiling. But if you look at the actual casting, you'll see that the fog lights and the grill are really pronounced into the actual metal. Um, it does not have like a hood line. It's got black tempos for the uh, headlights and for the heat extractors in the hood. And if you look, the heat extractors are really small. They're not even close to how the actual production model was, which is kind of funny in that way. If you look here on the doors, there's no front door line. It just kind of goes into where the extractors are for the hood. Um, not very, any kind of like, like what the production one is. Uh, the crossbar <laughs> if you look at it it's all yellow not many details there you move to the back and yeah i mean look at those taillights they're really recessed no detail on them there's no backup like uh backup lights or turn signals underneath them it's missing the trunk lines and gas cap lines but on this yellow one the reason why i wanted to show you is compared to the red one <laughs> You can tell that they made a lot of these in 1992. It was a huge, like, casting for them because the Viper had just come out. Tons and tons of people were buying these cars, but you can tell that the, the dye was getting wore out on this one because I literally just opened it tonight, and, I mean, look it. You can see these lines from the dye all the way to the back of the car because they needed to be sanded down and reworked, and they just, like, whatever they threw together. Look at that one. Like, where a mirror would go, there's a huge indention. And then look at the back quarter on that. It looks terrible. Absolutely terrible. Another thing about these cars was they kind of look like a cartoon version of the Viper. And one of the reasons is, yeah, those disc wheels that everybody knows from the 80s and early 90s were really popular on, like, Hot Wheels tracks and stuff. But look at the gap, the wheel gap in the wheel arches. I mean, the, the car, if you get down low, it looks like it's sitting up high. It It's way out of whack. I mean, the proportions do not look anything like an actual production Viper. You do get, like, frameless. It kind of looks like a frameless windshield. But for the time, it was cool. Everybody bought them. I mean, everybody bought them like crazy. 
like again, here's the red one. The red one, you'll notice that it was built earlier in the year because one is it doesn't have the Hot Wheels logo on the windshield. Um, but you can tell, like, look at the body compared to the other one. You can tell that the, the molds were a lot better. You still get a little bit of indention in the back, but nothing, like not really any trouble like the other one where you get body lines in the metal. Um, still recessed fog lights, recessed grill. Still a cool casting, and it looks way better in red, in my opinion, than yellow. But so we move, we went several years without an update for the RT10. And in 2016, they came out with a new updated car. And I brought out both for this year because for 2023, like I said, they introduced these two new uh, variants of the casting. And then they introduced a new car, which is totally weird for me. But the casting got, this is the same exact casting as that. However, it was updated in 2016. And if you flip the car over, you can see... Right here it says Mattel, 1992. So the, the casting was copyrighted in 1992, but it didn't get an update until 2016. And what did they do for that update? Well, the first thing you'll notice is the fog lights aren't as recessed. You get hood lines for once. So you notice the line underneath, uh, underneath the Viper logo, which is actually the wrong Viper logo. That's actually a Gen 3 Viper logo. That's that's Fangs instead of being Sneaky Pete like this guy here. So first of all, the tempos are wrong because, I don't know, people don't pay attention to that stuff, but I do. You d But you get a little more detail to the body. Um, the heat extractors are still the same. When we move to the side of the car, we do notice there's a front door line now. Um... Hot Wheels doesn't put their logo on the windshields anymore. They put them on the body, so there it is on the body. If you go to the back, you'll notice that there is a little indention right there for a gas cap. And you get trunk lines now, as well as indentions in the rear bumper and back, where the backup and turn signals are. So, yeah, a lot more detail than the original one, even though it's the same casting, just tweaked. The molds were tweaked a little bit. So, yeah, you get flush-mounted fog lights and a little more detail on the casting. Um, let me take this one away. So this one came out earlier this year. This was in one of the early cases. I can't remember which one, but they also introduced this purple one. And the purple one is funny because you can tell they built a lot this year, too. Now, look at how you can see the detail in the headlights here and the fog lights and this one looks it's not because of the purple paint it's just the mold was wore down so much that you can barely see the fog lights and you can barely barely see the headlights it looks more like it's built for like bonneville <laughs> for speed like high speed racing than anything um the grill's still prominent same details and you'll notice like yeah you can still get a trunk uh, lines and you get the gas cap lines but very basic but yes both of these came out this year and again you get the wrong viper logo on there so this one came out mid-year uh, i think it came out in like k case or whatever um don't quote me on that but it came out mid-year so the funny thing was here, let me show you this real quick Just to show you, I opened these tonight. If you look at the so, bottom of it, it says Dodge Viper RT10, okay? And if you notice, it's still got, it, look, it looks a lot better with headlight tempos, but it's got the wrong Viper logo on it. But if you look at the new car, which is funny because almost all the castings come out with um, new for 2023 or whatever, this one still says copyright 2021 on the thing, but you can notice different, it's basically the same drawing. However, on the bottom of the card, it says 92 Dodge Viper RT10, but there's no new actual logo on it. And I was looking at these because I'm like, I know these cars came out this year. This one's got a copyright for 2021 as well. So it's kind of weird. I don't know why they did it that way, but whatever. 
But here is the brand new casting. And right off the bat, you'll notice it's got headlight tempos. Even though the headlight tempos are on this one are like really sloppily done, like you notice that it's not lined up right. And the Sneaky Pete logo, the actual correct logo, is more towards the driver's side. It's a common thing, but you do get turn, like the actual turn indicators in the front. The fog lights are recessed, but you can notice that it's more like the original Viper because it's rounded, and you'll notice that this car looks like it's slammed. If I put the original red one up next to it, look at how high and short that casting is. This one here has a lot longer wheelbase. It looks completely different than this original casting, like completely different. You do get the door lines up front. You'll notice that the um, the hood intrudes more, or the doors intrude more into the hood. And look at those heat extractors on the hood. Totally look correct compared to those ones. You get mirrors, which is a really cool thing. Um, you do get the same exact wheels that you got on the earlier ones from this year. But you'll also notice that the exhaust is longer. And it's a little more in like pushed in, looking period correct. You do get a black uh, crossbar on the on the car. You get a lot, the actual correct body lines for the trunk around the back and the gas cap. You do get rear tempos, and you get a better, more prominent uh, rear bumper diffuser. But you can see the tempos are kind of like thrown on there. They're kind of crooked, but whatever. I mean, it's a dollar eighteen car. But if you look at underneath, you can see it says 2023, and then Mattel, copyright 2023. So this is the first brand new, all new casting of this car in 31 years. But it looks really good. I'm really impressed with what Mattel has done. You can tell there's no Hot Wheels logo on it, which actually looks pretty good because it doesn't take away from the character of the car. But your windshield does get... <laughs> it does get sun visors, which is kind of funny. The interior is a lot, it looks very similar, but it's a lot more prominent. Um, the seats look more indented, and there's a little more detail to the dash. But overall, night and day difference. I mean, look how slammed that thing looks compared to this thing. Look how, <laughs> it looks like you want to push the hood down and push this thing down to make it look more flush. But, I mean, look at look at the stance on these things. That's what cracks me up. Like, look how much longer this thing is. So I'm glad that Mattel is actually updating especially the cast, a lot of their castings, especially the ones that we've all come to love. Um, it's good to see that, you know, they're tuning them up a little bit. Like, this one looks so much more correct. And with today's technology and scanning things and stuff, I mean, it's pretty easy for them to change castings. Um... But so far, I'm, it's great. I'd love to see more of this casting with a little more detail. Hopefully, they can correct the, the tempos. I mean, I haven't looked at my other ones, but uh, I'm sure they're a little bit better than that. But nonetheless, great casting. So if you have any questions or any comments below, uh, take and leave them. I'd love to see what you guys think about the new 2023 Viper casting versus the original from 1992. So I'll take and uh, read them in the comments, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.